If you're applying to medical school, you're probably trying to decide whether you should apply to certain universities. So what we're doing now is a series where we're going to talk to some real students from real medical schools to help you decide and ask some of the questions that you would want to know whether you're thinking of applying to that specific university. So today we have Adewale, who's one of the lead tutors at FutureDoc and a student at Bristol. So I'm going to interview him and ask him the sort of questions that I think you guys would like to know when you are considering what universities to apply to. So, Adewale, welcome. Thank you, thank you, Ash. So, tell me, first of all, why did you apply to Bristol? I think I've got quite an interesting story. So, I began my whole journey to medical school when I was in sixth form, like many of you, and I had the opportunity to apply to a summer school. Now, that summer school is called an Insight into Bristol, and it's a very big summer school that they do that has a range of different degrees, and you are able to go into Bristol, and it's a residential summer school. So you go there, you stay the week, and I was fortunately on the medicine stream. So when I went in there, I was really interested in medicine um, from, a, from quite a young age, and this platform allowed me to learn a bit more about the course and see more things about the city, and I spent a whole week there. So I think I was really exposed to Bristol and its vibrancy and the course itself as well was quite holistic and it was something that was quite integrated as well. So from the beginning, you know, you were able to speak to patients and even on that summer school, we were putting those kind of simulations. So it really began from going on that residential summer school and exposing myself to the open days. And, you know, that's where I've effectively, you know, landed and I can call myself now a what, fourth year medical student at Bristol. So I've been there quite a while and yeah, I've, I'm loving every moment of it. Nice. So did you go to any other medical schools to visit before and did you choose Bristol over them? Yeah, so I went to quite a few. I went to Cambridge because I wanted to see what medicine was like at Cambridge. And I think from going there and seeing Bristol, I, you know, I've always loved science. But with Cambridge in particular, it had a really um, strong split of preclinical and clinical sciences. Mm. Whereas Bristol had that integrated approach. And, you know, I love my science, but I also wanted to see it in action. And that's something that Bristol offered. And you were able to speak to patients and just keep that motivation going. So I think Cambridge was one that I went to. I also had a look at medical schools in London. Um, being a London boy myself, I, I kind of wanted to leave the city a bit just to have that independence mm. and not rely on mum's cooking and the laundry all the time. I actually do it myself. So... <laughs> Um, that was one of the main reasons why I kind of just diverted to somewhere like Bristol where it's not too far from London in the case that I want to come back home um, but it also is a place that's its own city and has its own life and I could really you know learn a lot about myself from doing that too. Interesting so basically it was something about the vibe of Bristol being mm. there that made you want to, to go because like just being there and getting a feel yeah. for it. So. Can you pinpoint what it was about the, the vibe of Bristol that made yeah. you like it compared to the other ones That's that you really, tried? Yeah, because Bristol's kind of like a mini London and I think Bristolians may, be, may get odd to be for saying that, but <laughs> it's it's quite unique in the sense that it has a lot of the, the city's features like London, but it's a bit more you know intimate, a bit more quiet, you could say, mm. um, but it does pick up in the night. I know that for sure. Um, I, I lived in the city centre and every Saturday there'd always be some sort of thing going on, whether that's a carnival on the street, a demonstration. It's a really vibrant place to be and it has a really close-knit community as well so that was what really you know I saw instantly when I went to Bristol and a lot of a lot of the art if you if you are a big fan of art and street graffiti you know Banksy's works is, a, is all over Bristol so you can probably go on a, a street tour and find so many different cool things so it was a combination of the the city life but also that quiet intimate part that can also have too yeah absolutely I remember because <clears throat> I studied at Cardiff which mm. is yeah, just we across neighbors. the bridge yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah so many times my, you know, I or my friends would go for nights out in Bristol or mm. just go across, my, my artsy friends would go across <laughs> for all the exhibitions. So yeah. yeah, plenty going on and yeah, clear, yeah, I can definitely say that that's uh, still the case and it was the case when mm. I was in medical school. <laughs> so, okay, moving on. So with the course, with the medical course, mm. what was it that you liked about it compared to other courses or what, what specifically mm. about Bristol do you like? So the, the interesting thing about Bristol, when I applied, they were actually changing the curriculum. So it was previously called, I think, MB16, but it's now called MB21. And that's just code language for being very rigid scientific to now being a bit more integrated. Mm. So when I was applying, they had a very blended mix of preclinical and clinical. So for my first year, I remember my second week, I was seeing, I was, at, I was at a GP placement. So that meant that I was really put into that environment and immersed in the clinical environment. And in terms of how that's progressed, uh, I'm now at a stage where I've done my first three years of Bristol Medical School and I've taken the year out to intercalate. So they do give you the option to intercalate in Bristol. It's, it is optional, so it depends on whether you'd like to take that. It can be at the university itself, or it can be externally. I decided to externally intercalate, so I'm at Imperial at the moment doing a degree in management. And 
what I would say is that you know, with Bristol, it's a very holistic approach mm. um, to medicine. What, what a lot of people don't know is they really like creativity. So when I was in my first year, I think it was in the second lecture, he said, one of the lecturers said that, well, we really want you guys to do an art project. And I was like, wait, an art project? I mean, I, didn't, I, signed up for. <laughs> I chose GCS, I didn't choose GCSE art, I didn't choose um, A-level art for a reason. I'm really bad at art. But what that actually was looking for was the creativity side to medicine, mm. the arts behind medicine, the, the patient perspective that sometimes can be portrayed in things like poetry. So that was something that Bristol did that was really unique. And I think it was something that almost made me want to you know, stay there and really learn and build on my soft skills. And that's something that they really prioritize, you know, making sure that you can communicate and think creatively. Yeah, I think creativity often is just associated sometimes with you know music or yeah. writing poetry or art. But actually, creativity extends to all areas, and mm. you know, to come up with you know, new research yeah. or uh, new treatments or whatever it is, any breakthrough is a form of creativity within Definitely. you know that realm. Yeah. it's good that that's encouraged. Yeah. Um, you made me think of one question. So when I was at medical school, we did early clinical exposure. Mm. So we saw patients in in the first year, but like towards the end of the first year, and it was only every couple of months. But um, it was quite, I remember thinking it was quite daunting, especially the first yeah. couple of times. Did you, do you feel like going in early, just got it out of the way? How did yeah. you feel about doing it so early on? I was, I was in a position where it was like, I didn't know what to say. So they prepared you for these situations where you consult. But I think when you go there for the first time, you, you kind of have an idea of like, you know, to speak to the patient. But I think it came to a point in the conversation, I was like, it's good weather outside, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, just, I just ran out of things to say. But I think when you're put in that situation, you build it over time. So now if I'm going to speak to a patient, my third year of study, having done that the fir in first year, speaking to a patient when it's very uncomfortable, I feel very comfortable now. Um, so it's a daunting experience and they do throw you in there. But the main reason is to you know, build, get you out of your comfort zone is what I would say. And I think that's the, the really important thing that I would bear in mind for um, a lot of medical schools that have an integrated approach. The reason why it's done a lot of the time is to make sure you build those communication skills over time and you get a lot better at just sharpening your responses and effectively knowing what to say when you don't know what to say. Yeah, yeah, rather than being a deer in the headlights <laughs> in third year. So a big part of medical school is obviously the people that you meet and mm. university generally, like what you get up to and the new hobbies that you pick up. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about what you've enjoyed about the social side mm. of Bristol. Yeah, so this was one thing that I was really looking at when it came to applying to medical school. So I wanted to be in a place where I could be one close to London-ish and also um, enjoy the aspect of, of social life and be part of many societies. So I actually you know, joined quite a few societies, the Afro-Caribbean Society for one, where I got to try an array of different cultural foods. I was, I'm a big football fan, I'm a Man United fan, like Ash, so I played a lot for the, the, for the football team at Bristol. So I really wanted to have something that could transfer easily over from you know, being at home to now being at university to make that my home. So I went from you know, jo going to these societies to then applying for a position um, in the medical society as one of the vice presidents and I came from you know, going to now hosting these events so just showing you the, the cycle that you can go through. I think medics are known for their work hard, play harder uh, mentality, you know we really, the degree is it can be quite intense at times so it's good to have that you know close support system of friends and you know societies that you can lean on when times do get a bit harder with, with revision. I think that work-life balance is something that I've really learned to, to build over time and at Bristol there's loads of opportunities for you to do that. So for example every Wednesday um, in may be the case it still probably is the case now you get the afternoon off to do any like socials and sports mm. things and i think that's quite commonplace but in bristol they really prioritize it so mm. social life wise there's always something going on in bristol you'll never miss there's always an event so even if you miss one on you know during your freshers week there's always one there for you and the medical schools they tend to play a big part in having their own thing so there'll be a university football team but there'll be a medical society football team yeah. because it's really like trying to provide that system for you to enjoy when your degree can be very different to a lot of the other three-year degrees you have something that is with you for that whole period of time and you're around people that are also in that similar boat to you yeah definitely and i think it's always important to have medical and non-medical yes. friends because yes. you know for both groups uh, you know i'm now pretty much this summer, I'll be 10 years out of finishing my first degree in medicine. Mm. And still every year we meet up with medics, every year I meet up with some of the people that, so I was really big into snowboarding, so snowboard nice. society people. 
still meet up with them all the time. So, you know, you, you do really make friends for life and it's, mm. it's, it's a cliche, but it's so true. It's such an important part of it. Okay, so, I mean, for domestic applicants, UK applicants, not so much of a big deal because the fees are pretty consistent yeah. throughout all the medical schools, but just tell us, in terms of fees, what, how much uh, internationals, if they want to apply to Bristol Medical School, what so, are they paying? I believe they're paying around £43,000. More information can be found on the website though because the things do change year on year, so do have a look out for that. Mm. Um, but and that's 43,000 per year, per by year, the way. Per so year, it's expensive yeah. for international students. Yeah. Um, okay, and talk me through, because obviously Bristol is quite a competitive medical school, yeah. isn't it? And it, they do have some pretty stringent and actually slightly higher mm. requirements for some in some areas. So talk mm. me through what you remember about <laughs> it's a, a traumatic process that you probably uh. forgot, purposely forgotten a lot about. <laughs> but to, talk me through kind of what you had to go through or mm. what parameters you had to reach to be yeah. Bristol worthy. <laughs> I think as with all medical school applications, they're very um, competitive. And the first thing is you need to be meeting the minimum academic requirements. So if you are going through the undergraduate route, and that is the only route for Bristol, you need to be having you know, a minimum seven in maths. Um, in English, I believe it's a bit lower. It's around a six or a five in some cases. But you want to be hitting way above that. You want to be getting the eights, the nines, to really make sure you exceed those minimum academic requirements. The same goes for your A-levels. Uh, three A's is the standard at, at Bristol. If you are someone who is going through a contextual application, which is where you may be um, eligible for certain criteria, then that's lowered. But do check out that on the website for any specific details. So that's the academic mm. side. And before you go on, should we clarify? So contextual yeah. means that basically, if you come from certain circumstances, mm. usually schools that are underrepresented in medicine, yeah. or let's say you vert certain uh, socioeconomic backgrounds, you mm. can qualify to have almost the entry requirements lowered slightly or taken into consideration mm. as part of a wider application so that you um, basically even the playing field slightly is that how, that's how they, they look at it now the other thing that you said it's undergrad only yeah. however there are several access routes aren't they so yes. they accept access courses at Bristol yeah. and I think it's you need 70% minimum and yeah. a certain amount of merits in certain modules yeah, um, and they also offer the foundation year don't they yes. where you if you have good A-levels, but not the right subjects, mm. i.e. biology and chemistry, that you can apply to basically do a year where they get you ready for medicine. So you have an additional year where you catch up on all of that material that you need to know, mm. and then you just join the first year the next year with all the people who are just starting afresh. Yeah, they call that the gateway to Bristol Medical Course, so it also applies if you fall under those contextual, but as I said, it's also down to the A-levels too, if you haven't chose the right one. So once again, do check out the website in that regard, but that is really the general gist for those foundation um, courses. Um, yeah. So then you're saying non-academic or, or the other side of things, so then what else do we have? So we have the, the classic UCAT, uh, which the dreaded, the UCAT. dreaded UCAT, um, and I, it was still dreaded when I applied, I still dread it now. And with Bristol, it's very important to know the UCAT score and know their, their thresholds that they've had because of last year's, they've had a very high threshold. So I'm talking 2,800 and above. And for international students, in some cases, you know, all the way to the early 2,900. So it's a very, they do look at your UCAT as one of the major things that they assess alongside the academic criteria for, you know, selecting people to come to interview. So it's really important that you, you have an idea of that before you apply to Bristol. Yeah, and generally kind of top decile, top two deciles, yeah. usually you're okay. Yeah. But, you know, you've been, as well as we said, is a future doc tutor and mm -hmm. he's been helping a lot of students and, you know, We've been making sure that we're trying to get our students to hit that top decile. Yeah. Even we, really, we aim for three thousand and above to make yeah. sure that people are comfortable for everywhere. And you know, if you're new to this channel and you want to find out more, we're basically dedicated entirely to helping students get into medical and dental school. So we've got an entire playlist above Adwale's head here. <laughs> you click here, and you can see all the stuff that you need to have a good plan, to smash each of the sessions, mm -hmm. what you should do on the day and in the run up to the exam. So everything that you need to get a really good score. What are the requirements have we got? There's the usual application stuff. So the work experience, the interviews, the personal statements, anything that you want to say specific to Bristol for those? Yeah, so work experience is something that I think a lot of people have concerns about. 
and they're always worried about if they don't have medical work experience. Um, it's, it's important to try to secure that, but I think with the way times are, it can be tricky for some people. But with Bristol in particular, it's about having a experience of work as it is. You know, that can be whether it's paid work or in, a, or in a voluntary environment. It's more so about the transferable skills that you have. You know, when I was speaking to the one of the admission tutors at Bristol, they actually said that they like people that um, have, have worked at McDonald's. Now, that's not to say you need to work at McDonald's, <laughs> but the point is, is that when you're in an environment like McDonald's, it's high pressure, you may have to deal with customers who aren't happy, and that can almost be akin to the, the medical world where there's a lot of pressure on you, you may have patients who are quite difficult, as some may say. So it's really about the transferable skills. That's one of the main things that Bristol's looking out for in your application, that you have evidence of those skills that a doctor would almost have in those in their clinical environment. Yeah, absolutely. And again, uh, more playlists for how to get the, the right kind of yeah. work experience up here if you want to have a look. Um, so yeah, okay. Well, let's talk a little bit next about Bristol as from a teaching point of view. So mm. tell me kind of what you like about the teaching style, maybe the, the way this course is structured. Mm. What is it that's specific to Bristol that, that drew you to it? Yeah, I think Bristol and Cardiff both share a similar style, which is called case-based learning, CBL. And uh, CBL is a really, you know, it's quite similar to PBL, but it's more so following a case of a patient. So the way you do it is you start off with a, a bodily system. So that could be the cardiac, cardiovascular system. And you'll be giving a classic case on a patient who may be undergoing a heart attack or uh, maybe have heart failure. And you effectively underpin all the, sci the physiology behind that, the anatomy behind that. And you follow that across about two weeks of lectures, as well as being in the, in the dissection labs, and even in your placements that you get. So it's a very follow, very logical way to follow the, the curriculum. So that's the main way Bristol does their teaching. And that is broken into small group sessions. So you're mm -hmm. in a big group, you tackle it about, about seven to eight. So you're in a group of about seven to eight, you tackle a case and you go through that and you all separate it out and do your own bits of independent research and then come back together and teach that material. So you almost become a little expert in your area and you learn from your other colleagues on, on the conditions that they may have looked at. And it's a really good way of building, of teaching really, because teaching is a major part of medicine and those that teach well really understand the content. So that's something that Bristol really prioritizes in that case-based learning approach. And in terms of how it's structured over the years, you have case-based learning throughout. So from year one to year five, but it gets more clinical as you go on. So in year three, you know, you're doing a very clinical case and you're given blood results to interpret and see what how that considers the wider picture. And as it gets more focused, you know, these are sometimes cases that you actually see on the wards. So um, it's a really a good way of having that in your mind. So if you see a patient, you kind of remember back to that case you covered and you're like, oh, okay, this is the approach they are going for compared to what I've done already. Yeah, so slowly increasing the weight. <laughs> and just on that point, so clinical, uh, so actually interesting, clinic, clinic, well, clinical, or the word clinic comes from the, the Greek word klinos, which means to lay down. And okay. um, yeah, so when, uh, commentators on football say clinical finish they <laughs> actually kind of missing the point clinical means at the bedside which is mm -hmm. what we're saying in medical school you kind of start off in the early years as more of a biomedical scientist because you're learning all the importances of cell structure bio, uh, biological mechanisms all the the basics and then as you go on you apply more of that to clinical settings, so to mm. how it works in patients and how it works in disease and treatment. So it's kind of like you're starting with um, very sciencey stuff and, and you, with, well, in Bristol, just little bits of clinical exposure dropped in. And then you as you, you transition and kind of make it more 50-50 and then towards yeah. the end, you're more heavy on the clinical stuff and less so on the science stuff, which you should have learned by that stage. Mm. One thing <clears throat> that you made me think of when, so when we were talking about case-based learning, because I never did case-based learning. Okay. Um, Tell me what it is you specifically like about it. How, mm. how, like, what's the main benefit that you feel from case-based learning? It's definitely following the patient journey as it is. So every time we have about three sessions in Bristol, the first one is when you're opening up the case. The second is when you actually present the information back. And the third one is where they provide you some more information. So it's almost like you're solving a puzzle as it goes on. So you, I really like that continuity. I think the second thing um, is actually the group work. So mm. group work is something that in many universities, people either hate it or they love it. In some cases, when you're all motivated and going down the path of 
working together to under to tackle a case you really can see things from different perspectives so there was a, a classic case was when i was going through the cardiovascular case that i just mentioned and someone covered something that i really was struggling with in medical school it was one of the the, the physiology behind the heart which when you get there is very very complex <laughs> um but they explained it in a way that was really clear and just by having that exposure of someone being able to teach something back to you you can actually see it from a different perspective to the one you probably had and then from there I was able to understand it a lot better so I'd say definitely the aspect of the continuous journey you know you're following a patient a virtual patient and then the the, the group work the being able to learn from how someone else has approached their content yeah cool no definitely different like ways of looking at things mm. yeah so one of the things that obviously people are dying to know about about <laughs> Crystal so what's the social life and the nightlife like out there the social life is alive there's always something going on um, if you if you, you do enjoy going to clubs and those kind of like bars and restaurants there's always a, a club in the, in the city center for you to go to having with different venues and what you find is a lot of the bristol societies actually host events in these clubs or in these restaurants and they book it out for you and you can enjoy you know, the city with a lot of your colleagues um, and I guess in terms of the, the social life, if you're someone that's very sporty, Bristol has a gym um, that you can get a gym membership to. There's a lot of great facilities for badminton, football, and there's a massive sports complex for things like rugby and football. I, I was always there. I was always there in first year playing football, either rugby and just really getting into grips with a lot of the sports. and. I actually tried cricket as well for oh, the yeah. first time, and that was, I was I'll call myself an all rounder now. So oh yeah, I'm I've, nice. I've improved. I've improved. Very humble as well. A bit of a spin ball as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think the social life you definitely get to see things that you haven't seen before. You know, Ash mentioned that there was the snowboarding society that he joined. There's there's loads of different societies. There's Harry Potter society, Hogwarts society. There's so many different things um, that you can find your interests and passions in, and you know, with regards to nightlife there's always something to do in Bristol. The city is very vibrant. And even if you want to take a bit of a step back and look at more scenic, there's the Clifton Suspension Bridge, which is one of the, I think one of the longest bridges in Europe. You can mm. fact check that, but it's um, another place where you can do a lot of sightseeing. So there's there's something that caters towards everyone's, you know, um, everyone's interests. Yeah, absolutely. No, yeah, um, and definitely, like I say, um, a lot of, people went over to Bristol for a night out from Cardiff. <laughs> so yeah, definitely can vouch for the quality of the nightlife there. Um, I guess the final thing that people want to know about is accommodation. So mm. what's the accommodation like? Um, is there like one particular hall that most people are in mm. or are there places that people you'd recommend people steer clear of or maybe <laughs> steer towards? Oh, I'm going to be cancelled by Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. Check after watching this whether Adwal is still in medical school. <laughs> Well, I'd say um, in terms of accommodation, everyone in, well, in first year, you're offered um, the chance to have university accommodation. And it's usually split into the Stoke Bishop accommodation, which is a bit further out of Bristol, but it's a very student-centered environment, or you have the integrated into the city. So I opted for the integrated into the city approach because I really like the city, as I mentioned earlier. It's something that, you know, you get to almost be a local in Bristol at, some, at times. And I really wanted to have that experience. Um, in terms of Stoke Bishop, if you're someone that really likes that old school, you know, American style college where it's very campus based, because Bristol as a whole isn't a campus university, it's a integrated, so you're in the city. But if you like that environment where there's a lot of students and you can go to someone's flat, then I definitely recommend the Stoke Bishop accommodations. Um, but if you're someone that wants to almost step out and be part of a city and really immerse yourself as a local, as, as you could call it, then I definitely recommend the city accommodations. Um, the accommodation I went to is Woodland Court, so it's based in Clifton. Very, not a lot of people know about it, but I think it's probably one of the best um, accommodations. You have a lot of ensuite facilities there. Um, you know, big, uh, I'd say a medium-sized common room. I think a lot of people also go for like the classic Orchard Heights, which is a bit more in the city, but there's a massive common room, and people really love that. And Stoke Bishop, I think, oh, it's, I think it's called Hyatt Baker. So Hyatt Baker is one of the accommodations in Stoke Bishop where um, people really like to be in. It's really big, and it's. If you're, if you're on Hyatt Baker and you're in Stoke Bishop, they think you're the, you're the guy, the person that has got the best accommodation there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it reminds me, so in Cardiff, there are loads of little ones, but mm. the big one is called Talibont. And I remember, like, oh, that's where I stayed. <laughs> I, I was more the one that I wanted to be <laughs> in yeah. it where, where the masses were. So uh, for, for, those of the people, for those people who don't know what halls are like, describe mm. what a typical halls okay. room is like. Yeah, so... I was fortunate because I, I really wanted to have an ensuite um, accommodation, which means that 
you have your room and then you also have your own shower facilities. Now there's other options where it's shared and you can share between you know three or four people and there'd be maybe one or two bathrooms or you could actually be on the extreme end where there's 10 people and there's two bathrooms. So do bear that in mind because um, cleanliness is something to bear in mind with university accommodation. You want to be with clean and uh, you want to have a clean environment. So that's what... People who do the dishes. People who do the dishes, <laughs> people who take out the bins, you know, your mum's not there to do it for you, you have to do it. Um, so yeah, that's one thing for sure. And I guess in terms of the rooms, so you can have all different types of rooms. So if you're someone that wants to have it all inclusive, you can have a studio which will have its own kitchen or if you want to share a kitchen, you can also have that as well. So, or if you don't want to even cook at all, um, which I was thinking for a minute, do I want to cook? But I was like, I'm going to learn to cook. So if you don't want a kitchen, you can have catered accommodation where you have to be, meet the certain times to get food. So that's something to also bear in mind. Um, and then there's obviously the social spaces where really is the, the thing that I think people love in halls, especially mm. in those first years where you can have you know, a, a space where you can relax and meet new people. You know, when you're in your first year in Freshers Week, those common rooms will be where there's a lot of events held, a lot of free pizza. I mean, I think Domino's has a subscription with all universities, they're always there. Um, so I think, yeah, that's that's another thing about the, the, the university hall environment as well. Yeah, I mean, in Cardiff, just to kind of give you an idea of that, place Taliban where I mm. was, it was flats of six. Oh, so I you'd see. hang out in your kitchen, so every, every flat had a yeah. kitchen. But what would tend to happen was that um, in the like hallway people would gather yeah. or, in the, <laughs> or like people would just take it in turns to host and have like everybody from the building yeah. in one kitchen which got trashed. So. I, think, I think we did a, we did like a come down with me in my um when I was in my first year accommodation so everyone prepared a meal from their like country or just prepared their best meal and then they dressed up and we had the entertainment so these halls are really a good experience for you to almost get to know people that may not even be doing your course but really feel like a university student because sometimes being a medical student can it has its own thing you know medical societies but when you're in a university hall it's really nice to have that student feeling as well and you know I, I'd definitely make the most of that if you are going to go through accommodation really get to know the people you live with because you can be spending a lot of time with them as well. Yeah some really good advice I got before starting my first month at university was just really put yourself out there and mm -hmm. you know introduce yourself and get to know as many people as possible obviously you're not going to be able to be friends with all of them yeah. but the more people you meet uh, just the better it is later in the year because you bump into people and you know them and you're willing to talk to each other and it's not feasible for everybody but I think one of the best things I did before going to university was I went traveling for a few months by myself mm -hmm. so I was really just in that full like learning to meet people yeah. like, like, being comfortable meeting new people all the time mm -hmm. mode and was just really in the flow of that mm -hmm. and that translated really nicely into university and you know your first couple of months can really set you up quite nicely so Definitely. it's worth them um, really just kind of going in and give and you know being as outgoing as possible in that time Definitely. well so that kind of pretty much wraps up bristol in a nutshell in yeah. a, in a big nutshell <laughs> and so anything you want to sign off with anything like you, you want to say about bristol that you might not have touched on or just some things that you personally love about it, anything that you want to tell people? I, I think, you know, Bristol is a, is a very diverse city as well. I think people always assume Bristol's where the university campus is, but there's a really vibrant community outside of that. I definitely recommend for you to go to places like Eastern, Fish Ponds, where there's a really cultural aspect to the city as well. And I think it's a city that has a lot of history and it's somewhere that you can really learn. And I think it's it's one of those cities where you always, you always find yourself find, learning something new about it. So really do take, make the most of the city that you're in. If it's Bristol, do that. If it's another place, really get to learn and, and know a bit more about the city in comparison to where you're normally from because then you just explore more of the world and the UK too. Mm, cool. So uh, yeah, we'll wrap it up there. If you have any questions that you want to ask me or Adewale about Bristol, pop them in the comments below and we'll get back to you. But otherwise, we're doing a whole series of this for all the universities. We're going to cover every single one. So you can check out the playlist. I'm going to put it right here for you to watch. And um, yeah, you can see every university that's out there, every medical school that you might want to uh, consider applying to. So thank you for watching and I will see you over in one of those videos.